First of all, dress appropriately. Not too nice and not too sloppy. You want to look professional, but not a suit, especially in a lower end neighborhood. Okay? Khakis, like Joe's got that shirt you know, with his company name on it, perfect. Or a you know, like a polo shirt that has your company logo on it, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, go at different times because you know you the odds of catching someone at home are about three in ten. Okay. So go at different times. Try the same, you know, get a list of foreclosure people in a certain neighborhood. Knock on the door Saturday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Friday early. You know, try for like two or three different times to see if you can catch them in. Most times you won't. Uh, bring in a, par a partner of the opposite sex with you. That takes people, especially if you're a guy. Because if, you, if there's a woman at the door and you're a dude knocking, strange dude knocking, they don't want to let you in, and for good reason. Okay? But if it's the opposite, if you're a you know, a female, and there's a dude, he's like, hey, female. I haven't had one of those in my house in a long time. Doesn't be a lot nicer. However, if you're a couple, it's less intimidating because most people don't think of being scammed by a couple. They're being scammed by a man for sure. Less so a woman, less so a couple. Or two women is fine too. Just when there's more than one person, it just seems a little less intimidating to people for some reason. Okay, so um, if, you, if you're a dude and you don't have a wife, you know, hire an escort or something. Or... Joking. Joking. I'm I'm, just hire a not very good looking escort. You know, just one that's passable for your wife because it'll be cheaper. And then your wife won't get mad that you're hiring an escort because she's not a good looking escort. Uh, have a handout ready, something to hand them. I, I found that as soon as I open the, you know, they open the door, if I have something in my hand, they're curious as to what it is. And, and some people do the business card. I don't know. Most people are like you don't want them to distract from what you're saying because they're going to look at your business card. But um, one of the things I found very effective is I had a um, used to go door knocking with a, uh, a foreclosure timeline. Um, and it was just on a legal size paper, it was laminated and had like the stages of the foreclosure process. And I, and I had it in my hand and I'd say, uh, first of all, if you knock on the door and say, uh, are you Mr. Smith? I understand you're in foreclosure and you know, we'd like to help out. Slam. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna deny it. They're embarrassed. You just embarrass them. And they're gonna say, no, I got that taken care of. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that's not a problem. I already talked to someone about it. It's already fixed. Don't do that. Because you're just gonna humiliate them. You wanna get on their side. So first thing that I found the best way to say it is, uh, are, you, are you Bob Jones? Hey, Bob. My name's Bill, and uh, I understand uh, your neighbor Joe over there told me you're having a problem with your bank. You bet I'm having a problem with my bank. That's different. Then he gets pissed. Better to be pissed than embarrassed. But he's not pissed at you. Who's he pissed at? The bank. The bank. Well, Joe, maybe we can sit down and figure out something we can do with this bank. Let me ask you a question. Has anyone ever explained the foreclosure process to you, like the timelines? And I flip it over and it says, and all the different options you have. And just as he starts to peek, I put it into my bag. Because he wants to grab it and look at it. No, 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 no. Put it in the bag and say, you know what? Do you have 15 or 20 minutes sometime later this week? We can sit down, you and your wife, and we can discuss you know, what to expect and what your options are and see if there's anything we can do to get, get you through this problem. No pressure. So I'm not trying to force my way in the house and get them to sign the deed. You can't do that legally anyway anymore because of the foreclosure protection laws. So the only purpose of the, the conversation is to do what? Get the appointment. Now, I said it was 15 to 20 minutes. That's the only time in business it's acceptable to lie. How long the sales call is going to take? Because it's not going to be 15 to 20 minutes. It's going to be an hour and a half. But if I said, listen, Joe, you got an hour and a half on Thursday to go talk about your problem? So it's okay to say 15 or 20 minutes because you know it's not going to be 15 or 20 minutes. If you don't think that's okay to lie about, then don't. Tell them it's an hour and a half and see what happens. It may last 15 or 20 minutes. Who knows? So um, no pressure. I softened the conversation. I didn't embarrass him. I got him curious about the process, and he started looking, and I put it away. And I'll bring that with me to explain. Because if you hand him something, they'll say, well, give me that, and I'll look at it and call you back. Bye-bye. Never hear from you again. Now, um, have a memorized pitch, though. I, you should practice it, test it, you know, something that's your, be yourself, but you need to memorize that first 15 seconds because you've got 15 seconds to get the door slammed in your face. 
And, and you know what the odd thing is? 80% of the time, nobody else is knocked on their door. Most people don't do that. They mail letters, and they get no response, and they give up. So if you're going to do foreclosures, if you're going to do a mail or follow it up with a door knock. Now, 90% of the time, I don't want to say 90% of the time, maybe 70% of the time, they're not going to be home, or they're not going to answer the door. Don't leave your business card, and don't leave a brochure. They're going to throw it out. You leave a post-it note, a yellow post-it note, that said, Joe, Bill here, need to talk, number. They don't know what it's about. And it's personalized. In fact, you may want to pay someone to just slap those post-it notes before you even go out knocking, if you're too lazy to go out knocking, and see who calls. And people call it. What's this about? I'm not sure. Who are you? <laughs> Help me out. That, that's an old sales ploy. Look vulnerable, like you're in trouble. People want to help. It's like, geez. I got your number on my desk, Joe. Man, for the life of me, I can't remember where I got it from. I'm really embarrassed. My boss is gonna kill me. Can you help me out here? How did I get your number? I don't know. Well, well, did you call on one of my letters or something? No. You have a house? Yeah. You have a problem with your bank? Yeah. Oh, help me out here. Did you? Did we talk? And he, all of a sudden, he's helping you out, he's talking to you, and he feels bad for you because you're the, you're the victim in distress. It's amazing when you do that. People, people do respond to that, you know, as opposed to coming off strong and slick and you know, commanding. People get intimidated by that. When you're in trouble, they get less intimidated and they want to help you. Does that make sense? Um, and you know, the, pers the personalized post-it, that, that works, I, I found, really well. Don't, if you're going to leave something, leave a post-it. Don't leave anything else. We've tried door hangers, tried brochures, tried uh, business cards, nobody calls back. 